John Bonet's story. Schwarzenegger. Michael Jackson. Princess Diana. Cosby. Oprah sold a lot of papers. This is the stuff the tabloid dreams are made of. It was really fascinating. It was about um, the National Enquirer and how this guy came about, you know, buying it. He needed 75000 to buy it. Believe it or not, Gene Pope's real godfather was the godfather, Frank Costello, who was a big guy in the mob, obviously. That's where he got the money. And the whole history of it, at first they were totally into gore. If there was like a car accident, people died, they would get like the dead body photos. And what he did is that he went to the police department. He basically got first dibs on the photography of these horrible accidents. And uh, that's how it started. Oh, really? Yeah, and they Wait, would where show did you it watch like, this? Um, it was on CNN, of all things, oh, which fuck. them and National Choir, somehow they've, they've weaved like that, right? And Fox News and all that, not trying to be political here. They're all a little nuts at this point. So it came to be this one point when they started to get political. Management decided that we needed to be more patriotic. That was the word. And I'm not naming names because I don't know who the fuck was involved. But there was a, a particular person who was running for office and he had fucked around on his wife with this chick. He was seeing her off and on for 10 years, a woman by the name of Gigi Goyette. And they were worried that while he was running for office that this shit was gonna come out. So the National Enquirer approached this woman, said, hey, we'll buy your story and we'll make a book. We proposed to her that if she sold us the rights to her story, um, we ultimately would develop them in terms of a book and possibly a television movie. Yada, yada, and all this, and they gave her the deal, and then they owned all the rights to the story, and then they just killed it. Catch and kill. Buy up the rights to your story. Never seen again. Okay, so then this, uh, they started painting the woman out that was fucking the married guy like she was this victim. Going like, and you know, they had like one of these feminist ladies comes on, you know, the black frame glasses and the I'm smart haircut yeah. going, you know, they silence these women and blah, 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 blah. You're talking about silencing women and being involved in silencing women with hush payments. And I just started laughing going like, what the fuck are you, t they're all filthy in this story and she got so mad at me that I wasn't addressing the guy who went on to win the to win the election and I'm like I don't need to yeah. that was already addressed what I'm dressing is what's in the cracks which is my fucking job as a comic <laughs> anybody can crack? watch this and be fucking spoon-fed what the fuck they just told me to think which was yeah. not a good point to bring up um <laughs> it's like I'm supposed to sit here and feel bad for her and it's just like, they had to get to her before she sold the story. And then my wife goes, she wasn't trying to sell the story. I go, she sold it to the Inquirer. Sign the rights to your story over. David Pecker decided to buy up her life story. They knew what the fuck, I go, she was with this guy, she was taking his money, and as long as he was banging her, she was gonna keep her mouth shut. And then when she left, she was gonna sell the fucking story. They knew it. They did a preemptive strike and they did it. It's all dirtbag shit. And I was part of it. Um, not my proudest professional moment. Yeah. But, I, but we got into this big fucking thing where she just wanted me to be saying what the feminist lady was saying in that, which was half of the story. <laughs> what this guy did was fucking wrong. What this guy did was terrible. And you should be looking at this guy going, should this guy be holding public office? Obviously. Yeah. What? To make that point, don't turn her into some fucking Florence Nightingale. <laughs> like she was silenced, like some sort of like uh, crime was committed. Unbeknownst to me, it was to silence my story from ever hitting the stands because Arnold Schwarzenegger was running for governor. Yeah. It's like you guys were all in the dirt. We've all been done bad shit. I'm not judging either one of them, but it's just like, don't fucking put angel wings on her. Like she had this story to tell. She, they almost made it seem like it was like a Me Too story. It's like, no, yeah. this was consensual sex. 
with the married guy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. So we got in this big fucking thing. And uh, the takeaway was I lacked the intellect to have a debate without getting emotional. <laughs> and some other really, and I had a very simplistic way of looking at things. And I was like, all right, well, I guess this conversation is over. These are the hot sheets. Best investigator reporting on the planet. Okay, Go ahead, read the New York Times if you want to. They get lucky sometimes. Thanks, Manny. Can I believe you're looking for tips in the supermarket tabloids? Not looking for. Found. See, I've been up, I've been down, and I still remain in Puff Cloud. And I just don't know where my mind is gone, but I got.